Hey guys! So welcome to the first video in the tutorial series on making a farming RPG. This is a little preview of what we're going to be making. So we're going to be creating a controllable player, a collision system, a robust crop system which allows for many different types of crops with different properties such as growth times and prices, and also a night and day system. We'll make NPCs including people and animals, we'll go through creating a dialogue system, sound effects, houses with different rooms and levels, interactable objects and furniture. So now just a little disclaimer here, the assets I'm using are not my own, so they're from many different creators on a website called Open Game Art. And this site hosts all different kinds of assets including 2D art and music and they're all free to use. So for most of the assets you can use them, even commercially, but some of the licenses are more restrictive than others, so be sure to check the asset license if you're using them in a commercial project especially. And as for giving credit, again this will depend on the license as well, so often it's not required but it is appreciated and I would always recommend that you give credit. So now in the rest of this video I'm just going to be giving a basic introduction to GameMaker itself and some programming concepts. So if you already know what sprites, objects and rooms are and how basic code logic works, then feel free to skip to the next video, we're not really going to be doing anything else here. So in the next video we'll be doing the proper project setup, we'll start importing the assets that I was showing you in the preview and, and we'll code the player's movement in a way that allows for collisions and more complex interactions. All right, let's get started. All right, so if you're opening up Game Maker Studio 2 for the first time, this is probably what you're seeing right here. So we can do a number of things here. We can open up the marketplace where you can download assets. There's some tutorials, some game demos, opening and importing assets or projects into this project. But we're just going to click new. We're going to start a new project. We're going to be using Game Maker language, so we're going to be coding. We're not going to be using the drag and drop system. And I'm just going to call this farming RPG. Okay. So before we begin, let me just acquaint you with the project window. So everything we do in Game Maker Studio 2 is within what's called a workplace, which is kind of like a window or a tab. So you can have multiple workplaces and you can switch between them. You can have different tabs up. You can undock them, move them around. If you've got multiple monitors, you can drag it over to the other monitor, you can redock them and get rid of them. Up the top here we've got some buttons, so home page, open, save. Uh, the most important ones are probably these ones here, so this little play button here, this will run the game or you can just hit F5. So if we just hit that right now, we haven't done anything so it's just coming up with a black screen. Stop here will stop the game. Uh, this is the debugger tool so we'll be going into this in a later project. And here are the magnification tools. If we have tabs up, we can zoom in and out of them. Over here is our resource panel. And this is basically holding all of the stuff that makes up our game. So in our game project, we're going to have a collection of what's called assets or resources. So these include the art, the music, the sound effects, the fonts, the objects, and the levels or rooms of our game world. So everything. All these represent different types of assets. They're just stored in these separate trees. So we'll go over all of these, or most of them anyway, as we make our game, as we go through the series. But just to start you off, we're going to just go through three of them. So we're going to go through sprites, objects, and rooms. So let's talk about sprites first. They're probably the easiest to explain and understand. So a sprite is one of the types of assets in your game. The graphic images, anything that is an image. So any type of picture in our game, the grass, our characters, a background, all of these are going to be stored here as a sprite. So let's go ahead and create a new sprite. So over here, this little window will pop up. You can move it around and it'll show you a little preview of your sprite. So obviously there's nothing here right now because we haven't made anything. And in this window, you can change a bunch of properties about your sprite. So you could change the size here. You can import from an image in your desktop. And we'll be going over this whole window a bit more in later videos, but for now, I want to dive right in and just draw a sprite using the built-in image editor. So to open the image editor, you can double click this square right here, or you can hit edit image. So this is the image editor right here. Over here, this is where we can make new frames of the image. So I'll just make a bunch more frames here. So if I 
wanted to animate the sprite, it would appear here as the different frames. You can press play to preview the animation. So you can hold control and then use the mouse wheel up and down to zoom in and out of the image. If you click the middle mouse button and then move the mouse around, you can move around the image. Over here is the different tools we can use to draw our sprite. This is just the basic pencil. This is the eraser tool. As with other programs, you can just hit Control Z to undo. You can draw shapes with these. And I'm going to make this the character sprite. So if you want, you can go ahead and draw something a bit prettier, but I'm just, I'm just going to draw a square. So there we go. That's a very basic sprite. And we're done here, so we can just go over here and quit. And let's move on to objects. So to explain what an object is, I want to use a bit of an analogy because it's actually very similar to what an object is in the human mind. So for example, let's think of an object. Let's think of the object bird. So without giving you any more information, you're probably already picturing what a bird is in your mind. You're thinking maybe feathers, two eyes, two wings, and a beak. You might also be thinking of what it sounds like, what noises birds can make. You might be thinking of actions that birds can perform, flying, waddling. And you might also be thinking of many different types of birds, all with their own properties, their own sizes, colors, wingspans, speeds, and so on. And it's all of these things combined that give rise to the idea of what a bird is as an object in your mind. So objects are sort of abstract things that don't really exist in the real world. You can have instances of birds, but there is no bird object outside your mind. And that's exactly what an object is in programming. We create objects and assign them properties to make them behave in a certain way. We can make them look a certain way. We can give them variables, properties. We can give them a name. We can make them perform actions. We can make them emit sound effects. And we can have them interact with other objects. We can even set up what's called an inheritance system with a hierarchy of objects. So think back to the bird example. Remember how we have the bird object as a sort of umbrella, and then we have many different types of birds that come under it. So in the context of programming, we would call the bird the parent object, and it would be defining properties that all of the birds have. And then the different types of birds would be its children, and they would define the properties specific to those bird species. And we can use these hierarchies in our game. So for example, we can define a parent object called enemy, and this would describe actions that all enemies have. So it could set up the health system, maybe movement, attacking the player, and then we could define enemy types, which will have their slight variations on those actions and variables. So let's go ahead and create an object. So this little object editor window will pop up. So to get an object to do something, we have to use events. Basically, we have to tell it if a certain event happens, do this thing. And that's basically the fundamental logic of all programming. If this, do that. So if we're created, and then we can tell it to do a bunch of things here. When we get destroyed, maybe we can get it to blow up. If we click the mouse. And one of the most important ones is when we want it to be doing something every step. So this will include things like movement or collision checking. So we're going to be wanting to do something every single frame. In GameMaker, we don't refer to this as a frame. It's called a step, but it's basically the same thing. So every single step of the game or every single frame perform a certain action. So at the moment, this is an empty object. It doesn't have any variables and I'm not telling it to do anything, but it has the potential to be anything I code into it. For now, I'm just going to delete these events and I'm just going to assign it a sprite. That sprite that we drew before. All right, now let's move on to rooms. So rooms are kind of like the game world. So I'll just point out that while all game engines, they'll have something like rooms, they might be called something different. So they might be called a world or a level. And the game maker version of this is just called a room. So by default, when you make a new project, GameMaker will already have made a room for you, and that's room zero. And we'll just use that one. So to bring up the room editor, just double click on room, and it'll bring up this window. So as you can see, it's just a big black empty sheet right now. And you move around similarly to the image editor, so middle click to drag and move, hold control and the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. And we'll be going over this window 
in more depth in the next video. But for now, I just want you to know that this is where we will be putting all of our objects. So remember how I said that objects themselves are just abstract ideas and don't really exist? That's pretty much the case in a game engine too. So you can create objects, but if you never actually put them into a room, they won't ever exist in the game world. So to put an object in the game, to make it real, we create an instance of them. So to do this in here, we can just click and drag this into the game. And you could have as many instances as you want, right? As many birds as you want. So this is how we actually put objects into our world. So now if we run the game, we can see our objects here. And of course, they're not going to be doing anything because we haven't told them to do anything. But for this little exercise, let's just make them move when we hit the arrow keys. So to go back to the object, we can either we can just quit out of this or we can double click on the object here. But this will leave the tab open. So just to give us more space, just quit out of that. And now let's think about how to make the object move. So which event should we use? Basically, we want to be checking if I'm pressing a button, then move the character. That's the logic we're going to be using. So we could go if we're pressing a key down, left, right, up or down, and then we can tell it to move. And these, they check every single frame, kind of like the step event. These will run every single frame, but we can actually do everything from within the step event, which happens every frame. So let's go ahead and click the step event. So remember our logic. So we are saying if we press a button, move the player. And the basic structure of that code is going to look like this. So if some kind of condition in the parentheses, then do that in the curly brackets. So make sure you're using the correct brackets. So these normal parentheses will enclose the condition. And if this works out to be true, it's going to do whatever we put in these curly brackets. So now what is the condition? So the condition is a keyboard press. So in game maker, we put if keyboard check, and there's a few different options here. So keyboard check, we'll just check if a specific keyboard key is basically pressed down. And this is different to keyboard check pressed because this is just checking if you have just pressed it on the previous frame. If you've just pressed the key down, like if you're hitting space to jump and you hold the space key down, it's not going to keep jumping. It's only going to check if you pressed it on the last frame. And that goes for release as well. So it's only if you've released it on the previous frame. So if I use this for movement, if I said keyboard, if keyboard check pressed left key, and then I'm holding down the left key button when I'm running the game, it's only going to move it once. I would have to keep tapping the left key. I would have to keep pressing it for this code to work. So we're going to be using keyboard check. So whenever it's down, do this thing. All right. So if keyboard check, and then we have to give it a specific key. So if you're ever unsure what a function does, you can actually just middle click it and it will bring up the documentation and it will tell you what it does with a little example here too. So if we're looking for a list of keys, you can click here to keyboard input. And here is the format that we have to give it as an argument. So we can say if space, this is the space key, left, right, up, down. If you wanted to give it a character, you actually have to give it in this sort of format. You have to say odd and then a little quotation and then the letter. But I'm just going to be using the left, right, up, down keys. So let's get out of that and go back to our project. So I'm going to put if keyboard check VK left. So if I'm pressing the left key, move the player left. So in the game world, all objects have a position in the room. And this position is given by a certain coordinate, a certain X, Y coordinate. So we basically want to tell it to change its X, Y coordinate in the event that we press a keyboard button. So to move left, we're going to be changing the X coordinate. So we're going to put X equals, and then what do we want it to equal? We basically want it to be getting smaller because we're going left. So we want X to equal itself, but minus a bit. And to move it right up and down, we're going to be using exactly the same format. So I'm actually just going to copy this 
and paste it a few times. And we can change the buttons. Let's get rid of this. And let's change the button. So let's go VK right, up, and down. So for right, we want X to be getting larger, larger than its current position. So we're going to put plus. So now for up and down, we're not going to be changing the X coordinate anymore. We're going to be changing the Y, right? So let's change the Y. All right, now this is important. In Game Maker, the Y axis is a little bit unintuitive. So the Y origin, Y equals zero, it is actually starting at the top instead of down the bottom. So to go down, we're actually going to be making Y larger. And to go up, Y is getting smaller. I know it's a bit weird. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but that's just how it's done in Game Maker. All right, so we're done. Let's test this code. So just hit F5 or come up to the play button and hit play. All right, so here's our room and let's give it a little test. Let's hit the buttons. Left, down, right, up. So there we go. We've set up some really basic movement. So now this video was just a basic introduction to Game Maker and the fundamental assets that we're going to be using. But in the next video, we're going to be having a bit more fun. So we're going to import some art assets. We're going to be refining the movement system. We're going to be adding some collisions and I'll introduce you to some more concepts of Game Maker. So until then, take care and I'll see you next time.